Back in the US, it's bling bling. Out here, it's bling bang. This video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Go check them out at www.globalordnance.com. Yo, yo, what's up, homes? Doing my flex right here with my $60 worth of washers from Home Depot. What we're going to be doing today, it's, well, it's actually inspired by a picture we saw. It looked like it was a Special Forces guy in Vietnam. He had this picture, um, I forget what kind of weapon he was holding, but he had a strand of nuts wrapped around him and what it was it was a stroll a, a roll of deck cord with going through those nuts and basically what it was is an improvised omnidirectional anti-personnel mine similar to a claymore now of course since we have all the atf the magical paperwork from them to be able to make this stuff we of course were inspired to go out there and do the same thing so what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of videos and seeing how that works when you put a roll of deck cord either through these nuts right here this right here has three wraps of deck cord through it or through these huge ass washers right here with seven strands of deck cord running through it gonna be quite a big bang we also have one of the smaller ones that will set off that'll be a demonstration of hey as we start working our way up in the size of the detonations and we'll see what happens and of course for our friends at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. These are, of course, registered destructive devices. You'll be able to see in the picture that these have been serialized properly in accordance with the mark variants that we have and totally 100% legal. And let's get to blowing some stuff up. To get a better idea of what we are testing today, let's go back to the 60s, specifically 1964. Roy Orbison's hit song, Pretty Woman, was in the top of the music charts. Nice. Sean Connery was starring in the hit James Bond movie Goldfinger and nearly gets split in two with Auric Goldfinger's oversized laser. Awesome. And Lyndon B. Johnson was in office replacing John F. Kennedy after his very unfortunate assassination. With LBJ in office, the United States kind of gets involved in a messy kerfuffle in a small Asian nation known as Vietnam. During this conflict, the U.S. military formed a special ops group and headquartered them in Saigon, aka Ho Chi Minh City. This unit was called MACV SOG, or Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observation Group. This title is way too long, and the military loves their acronyms, so MACV SOG is easier to say. Or is it MACV SOG? Potato, potato. They were a multi branch operations group that performed very secretive missions into North Vietnam. We saw this one photo of an SOG operator who was decked out as if he was heading to a quinceanera in Pasadena or a birthday party in Chicago. This bit of jewelry wrapped around his neck caught our attention, which was an improvised mine made of deck cord and washers. So we cleaned out the fixture supply at our local hardware store of nuts, bolts, washers, and other items to make a few mines of our own. Remember the targets in the previous videos? Well, this video has fresh ones so we can see the fragmentation hits. We set them up in a perimeter around the mine at the testing area. The first one is the deck cord nut mine. This one has three wraps of deck cord and a good number of nuts. Let's see how it performs. So after the boom, we ran up here like Tuco looking for Arch Stanton's grave on the good, the bad and the ugly. and. We looked at the performance of the actual pieces and we found a whole one right here. Jake brought up after the fact that we may have used a hardened metal that may have prevented some of the fragmentation, but we still got some really good fragmentation laying around here. So it did work and we may, if we were gonna do this again, we probably would try a different type of metal that may be a little bit weaker, but let's go out there and check out the targets and see what we got. So this is the only one of the six targets that was hit and he was hit right here, which would have been an extremely grievous injury that you'd be either uh, very much unable to continue to be in the fight or you'd be bleeding out. It looks like something about this size right here went through there. So again, this right here was not a really effective weapon as far as producing an injury, but it would be useful if you were going to use it for like initiating an ambush or something in a traditional use for a claymore where you get, you're going to cause casualties, but you're also going to cause that sudden bam, something went off and everyone's going to be dazed and you can go and initiate with your other weapon systems. So what we'll do now is we'll go and try it now with the washers and see what happens. 
The washer mine is the big brother of the nut mine. This one is made with seven wraps of debt cord and about 10 weeks of allowance and washers at the fragmentation source. We hung it on the same T-post in the center of the test area and positioned it so that it would spray fragmentation at the same height of the targets. A quick slow motion analysis here shows that five wraps of deck cord has a nice little explosion to it. Despite this, you can clearly see the washers are still intact as they get tossed across the blast site. Something we forgot to consider is heat treating the metal so that it's more likely to fragment during detonation. A bit of an oversight and definitely something we'll consider in the next video. Well, one of my favorite movies is The Wild Bunch and the opening scene where they shoot their way out of that town for just a bunch of steel washers. We have a similar situation here and said they had a dollar worth of steel washers on The Wild Bunch. We had 70 something bucks worth of washers here on Ordnance Lab and I thought this was going to be an epic video. It was going to send fragmentation everywhere, brah. It was going to be so cool. And turns out even with seven rolls of debt or seven wraps of deck cord or well, I guess strands of deck cord running through them. <laughs> Nothing happened to them, really. They're a little messed up, and I wouldn't probably use them on construction or anything, but they were able to withstand that. So this is a good learning lesson for us that we need to actually weaken these before we use them. So we're going to sit around here and try to collect up our washers and see if we can redo that and see if that works better. Nearly all the washers were intact, amazingly, so we can recycle them for another test down the road. We collected our retirement fund worth of washers, then prepared for the last test. Well, got a bunch of chips for SHOT Show 2022. So we got different types of washers on this one. We were going to try some of the anti-turn ones, but we uh, got the wrong ones at Home Depot the other day. So we're going to get a mixed up one. What we did before with them, we tried to do it in a, basically a circle. But what we're going to try now is we're just going to try hanging it on a string like this of the deck cord. We're only going to be able to get one strand into there. And these are much smaller, so it won't have the same energy. But we'll see what happens and if this works better than the other ones. The previous two mines were set up in a ring parallel to the ground. This one is set up perpendicular to the ground. Does this change the testing parameter? Yes, absolutely it does. Seeing as the last two didn't perform as we hoped, it can only go up from here. Fingers crossed. Well, so we set it off a few hours ago, then it started raining and it's still raining. We, were, we all got soaked in, um, soaked down to the bone. And so now we finally got a break and uh, see what happened with it. And it looks like the deck cord didn't do anything. All we got right here is a whole bunch of washers again that are just sitting there. So it was interesting because we blew up a one of the Trichicon optics and with just a little bit of deck cord it managed to catastrophically destroy it but with just something little chineseium here it wasn't able to, to shear it so what we'll do is we'll do some future videos where we actually see what we can do to get it to function as a weapon as opposed to just being destroyed because the only thing that it really broke up was going to be the nuts and we don't really know why that could have been because the way that it's formed or whatever but we'll do some more research in future videos so hopefully y'all found this interesting we wished it would have been a more epic video where we did all kinds of catastrophic devastation but instead we just showed what actually doesn't work so we'll be doing some future stuff but our thanks to our sponsors global ordinance for making this video possible without their support we wouldn't be able to go out there and spend 70 bucks on washers just to go out there and see what happens and so make sure to check them out and we'll see y'all next time thanks for watching if you like this video be sure to hit the like button hit subscribe if you want to see more and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.